Olá para todo mundo, eu quero falar com vocês hoje sobre uma conferência proferida pela Judith Butler, uh, intitulada em tradução livre, né? Ética e Política da Não Violência. Uh, é uma palestra muito interessante, muito legal, em que ela tenta de alguma forma dar uh, feições precisas ao conceito e ideia de não violência. Eu separei para vocês dois trechinhos, o, o primeiro deles já o fim da da manifestação dela lá na conferência, e um segundo relativo a uma pergunta que fez um rapaz da, da Colômbia, me lembro bem, é, e nesses dois trechos ela busca precisar realmente o que ela quer dizer por não violência, é, e afastar esse conceito da ideia de uma espécie de um pacifismo, vamos dizer assim, né? meio, que, meio que requentado. Ela inclusive deixa bastante claro que, que a não violência implica, de certa forma, um cultivo da raiva, da ira, da fúria, e, e ao mesmo tempo, é, levando esses sentimentos à máxima potência, é, é, produzir uma contenção dos mesmos, né? é, de tal forma que, que, vamos dizer assim, se chegue a um limite de um poder que não se exerce, é, mas que está lá como força. Né? É, isso me lembra, de alguma forma, a ideia de, da potência como não fazer no Spinoza e também a, a, a noção de greve geral em Walter Benjamin, que é uma ideia anarquista, vamos dizer assim, que ele, que ele toma lá na época dele. Mas em ambos os casos fica claro que se trata de construir realmente é, um, um, uma intensidade, uma potência que possa fazer frente a, a violência né, exercida pela contraparte, vamos dizer assim, né? é, ou seja, é uma ira que não se realiza e não se realizando demonstra-se como uma potência de resistir à, à ação violenta e injusta uh, da contraparte, de modo geral um Estado, né? o mais comum é isso. Bom, é, de toda forma, é, eu vou deixar aqui os trechinhos que eu separei e o link para a conferência como um todo. E recomendo a quem tiver a paciência e gostar da Judith Butler que, que assista, porque é muito legal. Bem, gente, é isso por hoje. Um abraço para todo mundo e até uma próxima oportunidade aqui no canal. Envolve a mindfulness about that tipping point, the site where the force of resistance can become the violent act or practice, where the force of resistance can replicate the violent act or practice. What is it that keeps uh, uh, an embodied, forceful resistance to violence from becoming violent? There's no one answer, but it is the question, as it were, that has to be kept in mind. Um, This possibility for ambiguity should not dissuade us from, from, of the value of this kind of undertaking. Living on the edge means knowing precisely, means not knowing, sorry, means not knowing precisely how and when that conversion can happen from resistance to violence and standing one's ground in the midst of that uncertainty. The forms of resistance I'm appreciating are not to be understood as acts of individual heroism, but as concerted and collective actions, efforts to refuse or dismantle a legal regime invested in the rep reproduction of violence. It may seem like weakness to pursue the political possibilities of nonviolence, but that is only true if we equate strength with the exercise of violence. Right? So I gave a talk on nonviolence and a young man said to me, but that's just so weak. What you're offering is just so weak. And I said, yes, I aim to become weaker. <laughs> he was deeply confused because he did identify strength with violence and he could not understand the strength involved in nonviolence. Indeed, the strength in nonviolence emerges from this weakness with establishing the equal grievability and value of lives, insisting on the possibility of justice in a complex and shifting field of interpretation and, inju and justification. In fact, an act of nonviolence involves an act of interpretation, as well as a kind of physical assertion, an assertion of the claims of life and to justice against those forms of power that deal death 
both directly and indirectly, exposing the most precarious to what threatens their very life. It's a way of exposing and opposing violence without entering its terms, without replicating its terms. It posits an outside to violence which bears its force and defeats its aims. And it does this, I think, by um, asserting a form of solidarity that contains within it the social bonds we seek to build against the prospect of destruction. I'm going to end my formal remarks there, and we can take up um, this final suggestion in the question and answer period. Thank you very much. Um, I, um, I guess what I want to say um, about nonviolence is that it, it is a form of rage. It is a form of aggression. It is a kind of force. Um, I don't accept the idea that nonviolence is is a matter of finding the peaceful part of our soul and staying in that part of the soul, right? I don't think so. I think nonviolence becomes an issue precisely at the moment when violence is most possible. In other words, what does it mean to be that enraged, to be that outraged, to be putting one's body on the line to feel enormous aggression and still, and still to have a practice in which you do not allow that rage, that rage, that desire for revenge to replicate the terms of the violence you oppose. And I think that that's not just like an individual decision. I think it's a practice that people learn with one another. It's a, an ethos that can be built over time. And one of the major misunderstandings, I think, of nonviolence is that we imagine it's all about love. Not about love. It's actually about what you do with your hatred, right? What you do with your rage, what you do with your desire to kill, right? You need to actually know it fully. You need to feel the full force of your destructiveness in order to know what nonviolence requires. So um, I'm not asking anybody to set aside their anger. <laughs> I'm, I think anger should be cultivated. And I think we, we don't always think of anger as something that can be cultivated. We think it's either expressed or repressed. But there, there's a practice of cultivation that can be very, very effective. And even, you know, some people say to me, oh, well, I can't be nonviolent. I feel nonviolent. I have to put my body on the line. It's like, well, yes, nonviolence is about putting your body on the line, right? And, and then the question is, what kind of barrier are you to that violence? And, and how do you know your difference from it? I th and I, and I, I want to at least provisionally distinguish between a kind of force, a kind of strength that is not necessarily the same as the violence that it opposes. But that takes a kind of thinking together about something that is very, very hard. But, but interestingly, I, I actually, um, I think none of us are capable of acting nonviolently until we know the violence of which we are capable. <laughs>